This episode is brought to you by ZipRecruiter.com. You're listening to the Cantina Cast, your home for thought provoking Star Wars talk. Join Mike and Albert each week as they break down the latest news, trailers, movies, and of course, all your favorite characters from a galaxy far, far away. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 224. I almost said 244. We're not even that close yet. Woo, man. It's been a uh, rough, rough week for me, I guess. Anyway. Uh, so Albert, welcome. How are you doing? You doing a good, good. Week? Yeah, good. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Doing uh really good. A lot better than probably the last show. So, oh, well. I'm in good spirits. Yep. Well, that's good. I, I'm glad you're feeling better. Uh, Thank but, you. But that's not all. We are joined tonight by a legend from the Discord. We are joined by Jonesy or Chris. I, I'm not sure. We never nailed down what I should call you, but I, I'm going to go with Jonesy because that's what I know you as. So, welcome to the show. Yeah, Jonesy works. Yeah, thanks. Excellent. Um, so now, just to clarify, things are changing, as some of you know, our listeners and stuff like that. Uh, going forward, I'm taking a lesser role as a host, because there's other projects I want to get to and stuff, and Albert will be the main lead, and then, of course, Jonesy will be joining him as well, but I will still be around for the, you know, the big stuff, the trailers and all that stuff, because I like the limelight. No, I'm only kidding. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll be around. I'm still producing. I'm still with these guys and, and doing things with these uh, gentlemen here, and, and I'm very grateful for you guys to even come aboard and, and kind of help out with the show and stuff, so I thank you guys greatly. Um, so uh, let's get into this. Albert, I know you have a little bit of an announcement, because we had a lot of fun last night doing a top-secret project that you were uh, you were working on the last month or so, so uh, why don't you tell our listeners uh, what you've been up to, sir? Yeah, so last night we recorded uh, the the premiere episode of a new podcast that we're calling The Basement. Uh, it is a Ready Player One podcast, and each week, uh, myself, Mike, um, and some of the other guests, we have Will, who's joined us. Um, he's kind of new to this, but uh, he's a lifelong friend of mine and um, pretty knowledgeable with regards to like 80s pop culture and video games, that kind of thing. Um, but every, every show, we'll get together. Uh, we're breaking down the novel. And I'm saying it's probably about it's probably about 15 percent of the novel and 85 percent of really just talking about the pop culture references that are scattered. Throughout I think the it was book. it might have been a little less than that. Last it may have night. been five percent book and 95 percent pop cultures last yes, night. Yes. Yes. But it was entertaining, um, to say the least. Yeah. But we had a great time. And, and really like that first show, I mean, we went, we went about an hour and a half and I think we got halfway through the prologue. So it just kind of shows you just the the level of uh, decom- decomposition and. Uh, that we're doing with the pop culture references, but it's a lot of fun. If you guys have any interest in Ready Player One, uh, obviously that movie's coming out, and when this airs, we'll be about a week away. Uh, but if you got interest in the novel, uh, even if if you have an in- interest in the movie, or you just you know like '80s pop culture or pop culture references in general, uh, definitely give it a give it a spin. Check it out. It's uh, it was a ton of fun to record last night. We've got a lot of content still that we're going to get to. Um, we've got social media pages up. Maybe we'll put those in the show notes. Uh, we've got a, uh, you know, working on a website, uh, we may do a Patreon kind of thing and have some exclusive offers there as well. But, uh, yeah, please join us when you can, if, if you can, it's, uh, it's been a great, great first episode and we're looking forward to, uh, some more to come here. I, I will say this, that show deviated on certain topics that were interesting to say the least. It was a lot yeah, of fun. There were, there were many times when <laughs> I think either, either Mike or Wells said, this is not exactly the show I thought we were going to record, which is actually very good. And to be fair, if you really want to hear two people just beat up on me for about an hour and a half, this is the show for you because that's essentially what this was about was really just those two guys teaming up on me and really hating everything that I I liked. So well, my feelings you, weren't hurt though. It, you, it was all good. You gave us good reason to hate the things. I did. I, I, I put myself like, out there. Yeah, oingo boingo. That's oingo all, boingo. I'll just leave it at that. But anyway, all right, well, let's get into some, some news and stuff. Uh, the Last Jedi digital release it's uh well it's it's out now by the time you get this hear this it'll be definitely out and stuff like that uh your thoughts on this i'll throw it to you jonesy any thoughts on the digital release i know you have it i believe because you wanted to watch the documentaries and stuff like that i have yet to purchase it yet uh but i will at some point maybe possibly uh but what are your thoughts yeah it's kind of your standard digital release it's got all the extras that you're going to get on the blu-ray and the the dvd pack so or the blu-ray and 4k pack rather 
Um, the only thing unique about it though, is that you get this exclusive digital version, or I'm sorry, through the digital version, you get an exclusive uh, score only version of the movie. So no dialogue, no sound effects. It's a, a Ryan Johnson's tribute to uh, John Williams. So, which is what I saw actually in the, in the movie theater, because I bought that $20 ticket there to uh, do it. It was a tribute to John, which wasn't bad, but I was hoping for something else, but, but continue, sir. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about it. it it's exclusive to the movies anywhere app. So you have to tie that to one of your other digital accounts and then you can only view it through the movies anywhere app either too. So it's, it's to use Ryan's words, kind of a pain, <laughs> but it's really not too bad. And most platforms have it. So, but other than that, it's kind of your typical digital release. Now I know our buddy, Jason Ward over at making Star Wars.net had a little issue because I guess with the, I and mean, this is tit for tat, I guess you could say, uh, the 4k commentary, well, it was commentary, but it wasn't in the 4k. It was in the, or something like that. Something was off and he didn't have a, uh, you know, he didn't say, he didn't have nice words about it. So you would think if you're going to watch the commentary with the, the director and stuff, you'd have it in 4k also, but I guess budget wise, maybe they didn't want to do that. I don't know. It's crazy to think, but Albert, did you did you happen to get it at all, or, or yeah. oh, you did? Uh, so yeah, I'm the we only one it, that did. Um, no, we got it on Tuesday, and and we've already seen it three times. Um, so so, and I've seen it twice now, and the kids have seen it three times. They're on spring break, so I mean, they've got nothing better else to do but fight and watch movies. So, um, yeah, they've they've seen it a number of times. Um, going back to the, I guess the digital formats themselves. Yeah, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say they. I won't go so far. There's some people out there that are saying they kind of botch the release and that kind of thing. I wouldn't go so far to say that, but the fact that we have to have a, you know, you gotta, you gotta run through hoops basically or jump through hoops just to get the, uh, John Williams tribute thing, which I thought was actually really neat to be honest. Cause you know, there's, we've always talked about star Wars being really two parts. There's the story and then there's the music and without one or the other, it's not the same thing. It really isn't. John Williams is just as important to those movies as, you know, George Lucas was or Ryan Johnson was or the actors were all of it is all integral. It's all integral. It's all part of the the big picture. Um, but being able to to watch the movie with the music, I, it was something that I think a lot of fans have really wanted for a very long time. And there's versions out there that people have done this with. Right. They've actually pulled all that out. And here you have a director who's gone ahead and said, I'm going to I'm going to give you what you've always wanted and what he's probably seen out there, which is, which is kind of neat. It just sucks. That you have to kind of go through those, you know, jump through those hoops in order to get it. Um, and then that plus what, what Jason was mentioning was when you watch the, uh, the commentary, it's not in 4k. So, you know, why couldn't they have done that? Why wouldn't they just, I mean, it's all digital, right? It's not, none of this went to print yet. And we've still got about a week and a half before that comes out. So see, that's my, that's my one. And I don't recall this being the same way with the force awakens. And I could be wrong. I thought it was all done in one day. Like, shouldn't it just be all one day? I don't understand why we got to do digital, then the Blu-ray, and then whatever else after yeah, that. I think, I, I think Force Awakens came out with the digital format first, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe, I could be wrong, but I'm most positive that well, maybe. this is pretty first. much the new but way. I don't understand this why, is about the new way of doing it, though. Most movies now are coming out about a week or two in advance of the physical copies. Yeah. I mean, you could, if you're, cyni if you're cynical, you could say that there's people out there, and I know some of these people, I could be one of them, that will buy the digital version. And then when the media, the physical media comes out, um, they'll pick that up as well. So it's just an opportunity to get, you know, two for one kind of thing. So I don't know if that's really Disney's marketing plan or, you know, strategic plan overall, but um, there are certainly people out there that, that'll do both of them. So, well, in, in the coming years, there won't even be movie theaters because you're just going to download the movie and watch it that night when it comes out or whatever they're going to premiere. That's my future plans i think in 10 years that's what it'll be and there won't be any oh sure mike like you know, there won't be any toys or us left either <laughs> uh yeah then no, everything's dying so you know i you know i don't really feel sad about toys or us i don't know why everyone else does it's and you know everyone else is getting all crazy about the the sale barge with job of the hut oh, I, yeah, I that's that's I, exciting yeah well i i have no desire to get that because like hasbro which stinks because they're in my backyard right right here in Pawtucket, down the street from where i am and I think they make crap, but that's just me. So uh, that's why Hasbro won't talk to me. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we should move on to another, you know, and I, I'll just say this with, with like Disney or Lucasfilm. I, I know a lot of people are kind of picking on them over every little thing. And, and I don't think like the digital thing, they messed it up or anything like that. I think that's nitpicking really at the end of the day. But we'll move on to <laughs> something that kind of matters. And we talked about it last week, which was the 
the solo post is apparently they must have listened to the show, Albert, because that's what it was. We we changed their mind real quickly because they it's listened. It's the to only it. logical explanation. Exactly, exactly, exactly. They listened to us and said, oh, they're right, we should just change this. But anyway, the post is that they had a, a few weeks ago where they plagiarized uh, that gentleman in France and, and they kind of basically, they just stole it outright. And, and no fault of theirs, maybe, you know, they like we said, they, they hire vendors and these things happen. So they introduced new posters, which basically looked kind of the same. At least they give you that feel that just a, a solid background in the back and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know. What, what did you think of this, Albert? Yeah, I, they're uh, I mean, they're, they're they're kind of the same posters, I guess. They're kind of cool. The composition is, you know, similar outside of the silhouette of the names being on front of them. Uh, I felt bad. And I posted this on social media. I felt Chewy? bad for. Uh, yeah. For Jonas, um, because they. It just says Chewy as Chewy. They couldn't like, put okay. his name on there. That's what happened. They put his name on there, right? It's like I a mean, hockey jersey. You know, when you get the uh, the Polish names or, you know, the long names, <laughs> it's just too yeah, long to fit just, on the jersey. They're like, yeah, forget it. Sorry, you're nobody now. Yeah, exactly. That, which is wrong because they should have gave him credit. I don't know. Did, maybe because they, were they fearing, and this is sounds silly to even talk about it because we all know who, who Chewbacca, he's playing Chewbacca now. Is it is it more for respect out of Peter Mayhew? Is that why they didn't do it? They just put Chewy as Chewy? Is I, I don't know. What do you what do you think, Joe? Uh, I wish they would have just said Chewy as him as himself. It, <laughs> that yeah, would have been classic, at least, right? And that would at least have had a little bit of humor to it. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice yeah. to see the the actors behind the mask get, get a little bit of credit. But I don't know. There's this mystique about Chewbacca, right, or about masked people in general in any costumes, and you know, you get your name in the credits, but that's about it. So I, I don't know. It would have been True. nice to see something, even if it was a little bit kind of silly. Anyway, Albert, Albert, anything else to add to these posters? I mean, I like them. I mean, I like the other ones, too. I mean, these are pretty good, I guess. Yeah, no, they're good. I, the, like I said, the, the artwork's great. Um, you know, they're, the style of with the silhouettes over them was really neat. But this is just as cool to see it kind of exposed like this. Yeah. Um, and of course you got Lando who looks just fierce. I mean, Glover looks amazing in that, and you know, getting to see him like full, full shot there. Um, but yeah, I mean, th I think they did really good with these. I really want these posters and I don't know, right before we came on the air, I think Jonesy was mentioned that he had seen them or at least may have seen them out there. So if they're out there, that'd be awesome. Uh, I'd still would like to get my hands, I think on this particular poster for all of them, but I, I really want the original ones provided they're not going to go and settle outside or, and, you know, or pull them down or whatever. If they get produced, I would like to grab those because they really did like the composition and the way they were the stylized, uh, the look they had there. I'm sure Steve Sansweet has it. I'm sure he got them somehow. Some oh, way. he's got multiple copies. Oh, yeah. He's probably got, probably got all of them. <laughs> he <probably laughs> took every one of them. But I'll take all those. I don't know. Yep. Um, but the interesting thing was, I, I, I think you see the background a little clearer now. And I think we see, I think with Chewie, you see the Spice Mines of, of Kessel, uh, because it, it reminded me of the Clone Wars episode, obviously the, the, the brownish, mm -hmm. uh, yellowish the color, yeah, yep. the sky. And I thought, oh, this is the Clone Wars tie. Cause I immediately thought of that, that episode when they were there. And then I even thought of, uh, not that episode when, uh, when, uh, Rebels was there, when they went there and stuff like that. And by the way, that's when Callus kind of kicked the uh, stormtrooper off and he murdered someone, which apparently it's okay. Cause now he's. He's a rebel he's or a something. Guy. Yeah, he's a good guy and yeah. or whatever. So, right. but hey, I, I digress. You know. Uh, yeah, but she was yeah. definitely in some kind of a quarry, though. You can tell. Oh yeah, just yeah. Looking at the the wall up behind there. The only thing I'm curious about is the snowy planet. I don't know if anyone said anything, Jonesy. Do you know any ideas of what the snowy planet is? If it's Hoth, I'll laugh hysterically. But I doubt it's it's Hoth. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'll just throw it to you real quick. What? Any yeah, thoughts? I mean, it shouldn't be Hoth because Hoth's desolate, right? But. uh no, I have no idea. I haven't heard much about it. I keep hearing what was the uh, what was the the planet in in the Clone Wars? Was it Ryloth or something like that? That was a snowy planet. So I, I'm wondering if those. Uh, I don't will... think Ryloth. No, Ryloth was the uh, was the Twi'leks, I believe, and that was kind of desert like. I don't know. Is it Renvar? Is that that you know the planet that was in Battlefront, the the original one there? I don't know. I, it could be. That would be cool. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really know what it could be. I mean, is it even snow or is it something else? We, who knows? It's Star Wars, right? Yeah, it might be salt. All right. Well, let's. Well, I hope they're not going back to that planet. But anyway, uh, Forces of Destiny is back. Yay! I mean, now, now <laughs> I I'll leave it at this. I know it's not for me, so I'm not gonna badmouth it or anything like that. I I get what it's for. It's for like my daughter. Although my daughter 
doesn't find him interesting at all, which is strange because, well, that was last year. Now she might be into it because she's weird. She's fickle like that. One, you know, yeah, one, you said she was kind of on a big Star Wars kick right now, wouldn't she? Oh, yeah. She's on a huge kick with the Clone Wars. She's like, she keeps asking mm-hmm. me questions. I'm like, I remember the episode, but I don't remember every detail, kid. That was like <laughs> years ago. I got to go back in my notes and check everything there. And stuff like that. But she loves the clones and stuff like that. So I'm sure she'll give this another go. Last year, she just was like, yeah, okay. And she loves Ahsoka. And Ahsoka obviously was in in some of them. But uh, I'll throw it to you, Jonesy. You seem to be, uh, you mentioned something that kind of happens with Maz, uh, which is uh, obviously Albert's favorite character. Um, Mm, um, So I'll throw it to you. What are your thoughts on the forces of destiny here? Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it, uh, I don't know, I tried to get my daughter to watch with me and she was less than interested, so we've not picked up on it. But yeah, the the episode's called Bounty Hunted and the, the caption for it is Mas Kanata helps Leia, Chewbacca, and R2-D2 with a clever plan to free Han from Jabba the Hutt. So I can see where this one's going to have a little bit of controversy around it because they're starting to potentially tweak uh, who came up with the plan or how the events unfolded between Empire and Jedi with the, with the plan to save Han. And I think... Uh, at least my perspective on it is that Luke came up with the idea or was integral was as, as part of that idea. And this may not necessarily retcon that, but it seems like another example where we're starting to inject other little things into the stories in between where I don't know that it's absolutely necessary. And I have a feeling that it's probably not always wanted in some circles, but Albert, I'm kind of curious where, where, where your head's on on this one as well. Yeah, I'd be fine if they just wrote Maz completely out of the whole <laughs> I think saga. That's, that's your biggest uh, issue with the whole thing, right? That's the biggest problem with it. Yeah. The only, so I, I, for that particular episode, I guess the only thing that really stood out to me and like, I don't really get too hung up on the fact that they're, they may be going in and kind of tweaking things too much. Um, but you know, I guess there's more now. I've got more questions now because really, at least coming, you know, prior to this announcement, uh, Maz's link was Han, right? So Han's now in Carbonite. So how the heck did they get, you know, who who else knew her? Or how did she get involved? Maybe she finds out and she volunteers to come forward and help Luke with the plan or, you know, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I don't, I don't see how they're going to tie those two together. And it may, not, it may be more, it may just be a lot simpler in that she's already an established character in this cartoon. Um, she really hasn't had a lot of time. You know, she's the narrator, she's the voiceover at the beginning. And there's a couple other things that she's been in there, but maybe this is just they were trying to find a reason to get her back, you know, in on the screen. Um, I can tell you guys, you know, when I told my kids about this, they just were like elated. They they love this show, especially my daughter, who's four years old. She this is all she'll watch this on YouTube on repeat constantly. These little, you know, five minute shows. Um, And when I showed her these clips here, she's all she's so excited about all of these. Uh, being able to see, you know, oh, which is Padme good. and Jin, and um, she just saw uh, the Last Jedi, so she gravitated to Rose, which I just was really. I mean, she had Ray's her favorite. I mean, hands down, but she was already gravitating. Like she was asking, "Daddy, who is that?" And I said, "That's Rose." And every time Rose would come on, you could see she would just focus right in on her. So, I mean, it's working. Disney, whatever Disney's doing to get you know girls to to really start, you know, coming in and 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 giving them characters that they can. Uh, look up to it's definitely working because my daughter's you know she's hook line and sinker into all this now well that's good now see here's the thing with the forces of destiny and well with this particular episode here uh jonesy i I kind of agree with you and i I think even albert you kind of said as much as well as like i don't think we need to piece together every little thing here like i i do we really need this like did we really need to know leia was doing what with the ewoks and in one of the episodes and stuff like that like do we really need mucking up what came before or something like that. Not that it really is taken away because in my mind, they don't even exist because it's not meant for me. So I don't even pay attention to it really. So it's not a big deal. My daughter pays attention to it if she gets into it or or like your daughter, Albert. And you know, that's great. That's what it's for. That's what it's what we need. Uh, that's not a problem, but I, I don't think we need every little detail, I guess. But then again, we're pigeonholed into the, you know, everything is canon, which we have it. Well, I have an issue with, I think maybe they need to start to be a little more selective and stuff like that. But as far as this plan goes, I, I look at it two ways because, you know, they had that uh, piece, I guess, I can't remember what was on Collider or wherever it was, where they were talking about Luke's insane plan. It doesn't make any sense. Well, I saw two plans when I was a kid. I, I saw it as Leia came up with her own thing 
to do her thing. But Luke had a vision about it and he went about doing his own thing. And there was really two plans that going on and, and it kind of just worked out, which was how the force wanted it to be. So if Maz is part of Leia's plan, you know, they don't mention Luke here at any point here. I imagine Luke's in the, you know, on Tatooine figuring out what to do and, and build a lightsaber and all these Building stuff. Lights yeah, right. And I'm sure he has a vision, which kind of, you know, plays into the, you know, it's not going to go the way you think, which is true. You know, it never goes the way you think. He kind of has an idea, which is why he gives R2 the saber and all these other things. Um, but I think Leia thought she could waltz, waltz in there with, you know, Lando and, you know, doesn't mention Le Lando in this at all, which is interesting um, and stuff like that. So I think there's two things going on here, which I think would, you know, make sense to me. I don't know. I'll have to watch the episode and see where we go from there. And we'll have to maybe come back and revisit this stuff. But but does that make sense to you, Jonesy? Would that would that be OK in your mind or something? Or I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, the one I have to contradict <laughs> myself a little bit because when I look at the other episode where they want to explore a lesson that Luke needs to learn with Yoda, like that almost sounds a little bit interesting to me. I mean, besides Mark Hamill doing the voiceover, which is going to be pretty cool. But, you know, there was it was so vague with the training and we just saw glimpses of uh, of some of it in Empire that there's some areas in there where it's like, OK, there might be something interesting depending on what kind of story they want to tell on it. But that that type of thing might be interesting to see or, well, yeah, to see and to hear. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. They've got a total of uh, eight episodes, by the way, that they're about to they're going to launch, I think, on the 19th on YouTube. This is very similar to what they did last time with the I guess they're calling the season three or volume three. Um, and when they did volume two, they did, they, they did the same thing. They released them out on YouTube. And then a week or two later, um, you were able to watch them on the Disney Channel. Um, and then, of course, on their app as well. So. Um, yeah, that Luke one does look interesting. I don't know. Hopefully they don't dip into anything and, and start, you know, jacking with uh, the the mythologies and stuff like that. But it it, it is cool that we're going to get to see Yoda. Hopefully they'll pull Frank Oz. I didn't see his name mentioned um, unless I overlooked it. But I did see that Mark Hamill was coming back to reprise that role. So that's kind of cool. All right. Well, I, I think maybe we should just wait and see and see what happens before we you know, lose our mind, which is what we do as Star Wars fans, right? We we all get worked up over things and, and then we look at it like, oh, all right, it wasn't as bad. But, but granted, sometimes that might be warranted or whatever. But uh, in any case, um, well, well actually, you got, yeah, yeah. So it, just one last thing. Yep. To be fair, there is an episode that I know you're gravitating to called Poor Problems, right? So uh, we, why uh, are we even mentioned that going why, for you there? Why, why would we even bring up Porgs? I don't know why you would but do that. But look at them. They've got their hands up. How cute is that? Uh, do we have the one where the lightsaber goes through his eyeball? That, <laughs> I don't that, think that's what that, I don't think that's in this episode. I'll tell you what I to redeem the Ewoks. It would it would be great if they like an Ewok eats one like that. Yeah. that like that would be cool for me. I would go. I need a T-shirt of that made. Jonesy, make me a T-shirt. Chewbacca and Ewok. I, they, they clink glasses and toast a pork pork supper. Yeah, exa exactly. That would be great. I would love that. That would perfect. Let's let's do that. But then anyway, they give Leia a dress. Uh, yeah, there you go. Like, hey, hey, we made this out of porgs. No, I, I oh, actually, space wal walruses. Yeah, we made that. Why are you putting that in the notes, sir? Oh, you're evil man. But anyway, all right. Well, we're going to take a quick uh, pause for our sponsor, and we'll be right back. Hiring? Every business needs great people and a better way to find them. Something better than just posting your job online and just praying for the right people to see it. ZipRecruiter knew there was a smarter way. So they built a platform that finds the right candidates for you. ZipRecruiter learns what you're looking for, identifies the people with the right experience, and invites them to apply to your job. These invitations have revolutionized how you find your next hire. In fact, 80% of the employers who post the job on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate through the site in just one day. And ZipRecruiter doesn't stop there. They even spotlight the strongest applicants you receive so you never miss a great match. The right candidate is out there, ZipRecruiter is how you find them. Businesses of all sizes trust ZipRecruiter for their hiring needs. Right now, our listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Cantina. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Cantina. Then once again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Cantina. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. All right, well, so Rebels ended like a couple of weeks ago, like two weeks or something like that. So... Uh, one of the things that we failed to mention, uh, which is surprising because we're both big fans of the Emperor and Sidious, I should say, 
And Ezra and Sidious's interaction was pretty compelling and interesting, but we like talked about it for like, I think at the end of the show, we just mentioned we didn't talk about it, Albert. So I figured we should probably talk about it. I know Jonesy was like that scene or those scenes or whatever. Um, but I'll, I'll throw it to you first, Jonesy. What did you think of uh, their interaction? And uh, did you like it? I assume you did. Yeah, yeah. In the canteen after dark, we did. I was really excited because I, I thought the Sidious was going to take a more central role, uh, finally giving a very clear kind of bad guy. And I was probably just more wishful thinking because they had to bring Thrawn back into the fold. But um, it felt a little bit forced, but at the same time, it made a lot of sense for him to be there um, because presumably you can't escape Sidious's watchful eye, if you will. And um, maybe the only thing I would have liked to have seen is that he be inserted a little earlier so that we could see this involvement or this interest, although I can understand why that may not have been there because this is really the perspective of um, really of, of this small group uh, with, with slight insight into the, into the bad guys. But, uh, but we're giving that a little bit of that additional buildup, I think to these confrontations. Um, but generally I, I liked it. I mean, it, it gave us a, a, it, it hurried Ezra through the world between worlds episodes so that he couldn't linger in there and do things. It, it was that catalyst to really keep things moving to make a decision uh, and then to get out. Otherwise, I don't know how they would have moved that along. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to pause there because that's kind of one episode and we can come back to the finale because uh, I'd like to hear y'all's thoughts on that too. Uh, Albert, what, what did you think? Because we didn't even talk about it. So so please give us your thoughts now, sir. Yeah, we we did skip over this and I don't I don't remember why we did. But I, Well, um, there was a lot going on. So we just kind of. Yeah, we, we did try to wrap up the last six episodes in that in that Rebels. Uh, finale one that we did so which is my fault as producer i probably should take the heat for that but continue sir yeah that's fine you can take the heat for okay that. thank um, you yep uh so i think i guess uh the way i saw it was in this was probably even early on because this this came up like especially after like season two in season one right we didn't we we there was barely a mention of, of vader or the emperor if that um, it was a kind of off, off the, off the cuff thing or just on the side. Right. And then in season two, you finally get Vader. And the way I rationalized that at the time was, okay, Vader's whole lot in life during this era was really exterminating the Jedi. If, if should they or, or force sensitive people and all of that, right. We know that. So to me, it was like, okay, he's been hearing rumors that there's been a Jedi, maybe possibly two or an apprentice. And he may have just let that go and let them deal with, you know, let the stormtroopers and all his um, underlings kind of deal with that. Time goes by. They're just, a, you know, a thorn in his side. He finally figures, you know what, I'm showing up. And there's obviously a lot of other reasons here because of the the um, the temple and everything. But to me, it was like, OK, Vader said, you know what, enough's enough. I'm stepping in. I'm going to take over this and get get rid of these guys because they're they're, they're offing um, all of my dark force or uh, dark side users. And so. The same, the way I kind of rationalized this was the same thing. So now you've gone almost three, four years and, you know, there's these smaller, these little small victories that keep happening and it's the stinking Jedi still again. Right. And, you know, at some point the emperor is going to, you know, he's going to ask, who is this? What's going on? Do I need to get involved? And maybe this was it. This was enough. He's already had enough. He, he figured at this point I need to step in and, and, and really kind of insert myself and, and, do something about these guys. So I think it just, I think it just culminated with, you know, all the stuff that they had done in the past, all of the, um, you know, the problems that they've caused for the empire, uh, at different levels. And the emperor finally stepped in and did it. I think for me, his, well, first off being, having Ian McDermott come and do the voice was just freaking amazing. Um, and we got to, you know, in the world between worlds, it was a pretty small part. He was kind of cloaked and, it was kind of a, a teaser more than anything, because really we got a lot of it in the um, uh, Fool's Hope and uh, Family Reunion episodes. Um, I thought the Emperor was like, you know, just on his A game, really. He was completely manipulating him the entire time. And I think I, I mentioned this to you after we'd stopped recording, but there was one thing that I really wanted to point out in that episode where, you know, Ezra's walking up. He sees his mom and dad. And he's getting, you can tell he's being seduced by the thought of, hey, uh, th this can happen. This really could happen. I could be reunited with them. And there's a moment in there 
where when he's looking at his parents and he he's not even looking at the emperor, he just hears the voice. Uh, and he says, well, what about my friends? And Palpatine doesn't even acknowledge that. He doesn't even respond to that question. He just says, you can see your parents again. And that if you go back and just watch that scene, it's very calculated. And I think it speaks a lot to just how manipulative and seductive the emperor is. Um, and he's doing this all while, you know, wearing those white vested robes as opposed to what we normally see him. So that was just another layer of his, um, you know, shadowy figure that that and, and what he's able to do. So uh, overall, I thought it was I thought it was great. Um, it did seem a little bit like, you know, maybe it was out of place just a little bit because we hadn't really seen much of him. But again, I'm going to chalk that up to the fact that one, it was a season finale. Uh, two, you got Ian McDermott saying, yes, OK, we'll get him in there somewhere. Um, and then three, you know, it's it's probably the emperor is just enough's enough. And, and he wants to, you know, he obviously had other uh, motivations there, too. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of going long here. But the other thing was, you know, we, we know that he knew Ezra was the key to getting into the world between worlds. So, you know, if he felt like no one else was going to be able to get this kid to, to open that door. He was going to see to it personally. So that was probably his fourth motivation there. Well, I was going to say, what was the plan? Send him through the gate and then that changes everything and Ezra's out of his life. Is that what he was going for there? Or was he trying to seduce him as an apprentice or a dark side user? I don't know. I'm just spitballing. Yeah, it. I don't know. I don't I didn't I didn't get that so much as that. I think that he was fully expecting either one of two outcomes, either Ezra would go in there and he was no longer going to be uh, someone he had to contend with or two once. The portal was open and suddenly he had this knowledge, whatever that means, uh, to do it himself. I think he would just have offed, you know, off Ezra altogether and just got rid of him, killed him right there, uh, or at least tried to. Anyways, I, I don't think there was a I don't think he was looking at this as an opportunity um, to to kind of take him under for. Any yeah, reason. That, that's how but I the problem it. is. Uh, yeah. yeah, I viewed it more Go as that trapping him or you are effectively locking the gate open for for, you know, more consistent access. Well, the, well, the thing there is if if he goes through the gate, there's always that that whole, you know, there's a ripple of of effect, you know, like like you cause something and like we've learned in, you know, back to the future, things happen and stuff like that. So when he goes through the gate, there's there could be a problem. I mean, we just still don't even know if like he pulled the soaker out, if that caused any kind of a ripple or any time something or whatever you know, we'll, we'll see. Well, I don't know what, what's going to happen with that. I mean, maybe we'll get answers. Maybe we won't. I like, if we don't get answers, leave it mysterious. That's not there, too, I think yeah. there's two sides on this too. I've, I've heard, um, just even afterwards and then as recently as just a few days ago, I think there's still a lot of debate about whether or not this really operates in the traditional sense of what we know in terms of time travel and, and going like, like you said earlier, where, you know, traditionally speaking, for something that's not real right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you go back in time and you change something, then it has, you know, it alters the, the effects of, uh, the future tense. Right. Yeah. And there's, I think that's certainly one side of the camp, but then, you know, I think people are taking what, um, Dave said in rebels recon when they asked him about whether it was, you know, someone mentioned, uh, I think it was Andy mentioned about it, it, time travel. She said the words or someone said the words and he said, well, it's really not, time travel. And so, okay, well, if it's not time travel, then, you know, then what is it? And and I won't, we don't need to get into it here, but there's been a lot, there's a lot of debate out there right now. A lot of people posting stuff about what it means and, you know, whether or not it does alter the future or whether or not this was just a way, th these were just visions, I guess, or were, um, you know, harmless, um, you know, occurrences that, that people could see, but not necessarily manipulate and which, you know, I can't I'm, I don't I don't subscribe to that because he clearly pulled Ahsoka out. Right. And then put her in and a lot, she went back in. So there is some way that at least you were able to, to go into that time period. So whether or not there's, again, those repercussions or those ripple effects, I don't know who's to say it's Star Wars. So, you know, we got the force. We got to contend with that. First. <laughs> well, that's true. I don't know. I mean, I I took it as more of like everything's happening at once, which I mentioned last episode. Um, is it one of those things where, all right, if you may go back in time, you may change events, but eventually what was supposed to happen happens anyway, which is kind of where I'm getting with the the cosmic force. What, whatever happens was bound to happen because it goes back to my whole theory that the force will do what the force wants. You may change things, but eventually it will come around to what it really wants and you have no free will at the end of the day. That's always how I took it. 
Um, well, if that's yeah. so in that, no, and I, 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 I can see that too. Um, so let's say this then. So in that moment, what if, what if Ahsoka had gone and saved Anakin? What would that have done? Exactly. Like, like what, you know, I mean, it's interesting because the way I took it with like Ahsoka was pulled out. It's like the daughter wanted that to happen because she was a little bird up there um, saying, hey, save Ahsoka here for other reasons, which I th feel is like tied into Luke and how they meet up. And, you know, she kind of stares him this way or whatever that whole thing will be um, type of stuff. But as she said, I can't go with you, Ezra. You have to be willing to go there or something. I don't know. For whatever reason why she deviated, I don't know why. I, I'm not sure what that would be, but... uh it's very interesting stuff, and I'm sure we should probably do an episode when we maybe go back and look at things and kind of digest it a little bit. But uh, my thoughts we can do on, a what if series like yeah, they did with the uh, Marvel comics back in the day. Pretty much. I mean, are we getting into Doctor Strange territory here? It's like, you know, <laughs> one could look at it that way. I mean, there was a lot going on there. Um, it is compelling, but like I said, it's a dangerous thing to meddle with. It, probably better off just to leave it for like 30 years or something and not even touch it. Or anything like that. Although I would have loved to see Ray and her vision go through something like this and then some wacky stuff happen. But that didn't happen. We got other things that happened in The Last Jedi. But anyway, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention, and Jonesy kind of touched on it real quick, is I was going to ask all of you, um, did it feel like the Emperor was forced in to Rebels? Um, and I say this because, and, and here's the funky, crazy thing I have with Rebels. All right. So season one, you had Callus. Not much going on there, you know, the local kind of higher ups kind of harassing these rebels, which is fine because you got to work your way up and cause aggravation for the, you know, the empire and stuff. And then we get Vader, who's no, we had the, inqu we had the, the inquisitors. inquisitors as well. Yeah. Yep. Well, you get Vader and the inquisitors. All right. Which I had a problem with in a, in a way because Vader was the one that hunted down. But granted, he can't hunt them all down. So he's going to need some teammates. I get that. That's that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. The only problem mm -hmm. I have a problem with is helicopter lightsabers. But that's a whole other podcast for another day um so we get vader in season two and obviously he has this fight with ahsoka so now i think what i need is a conversation with with the emperor and and vader at that moment after the fact of what happened because then we get thrawn and we go from there for the next few seasons there we don't get back to vader coming back and hunting down because obviously the emperor knows ezra is a pain in the butt and he knows kanan or whatever not so much kanan but more ezra and stuff like that. So why wouldn't you send your your top guy, Vader, to go and finally put the blow on on Ezra and not so much leave it up to, you know, uh, to Thrawn? I don't I don't know. I'm not just curious, Jonesy. What what do you what well, do you say? What makes it even more interesting is what if this is how the Emperor learns about the portals with this event that happened, and Vader reports that back to to Sidious. No, ah, that Ahsoka disappeared. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Um, that's true. So I mean, and then why wouldn't he have been involved earlier? I mean, it, just to prove to add on to your point, uh, yeah, Vader's lack of presence, and then and, and by extension, Palpatine's as well, was a little off-putting. And maybe that's why season three dragged on quite a bit for me. Uh, just not having that mm -hmm. clear direction, even though yeah, whatever. But yeah, I, I I wish he was in there. <laughs> we need more Sidious <laughs> or more Palpatine in general to keep this thing moving forward. Uh, yeah, I think I think they probably just felt like, OK, we've got we're going to do some and I won't, I won't go I won't call it fan service, but, you know, we're introducing Thrawn and that should be enough to tide people over and then we'll wrap everything up in season four and bring these guys back. Although we didn't get we didn't get Vader back. But well, and, um, but yeah, maybe maybe that was it, part of the strategy. They felt like, OK, that would at least. And Thrawn you know, feels so satisfying. Yeah, Thrawn people. feels so level headed and just undefeatable most of the time right you cannot outthink him and at some point that gets a little bit stale uh it, yeah it's the superman effect where they yeah i mean he really can't do any wrong and them. if you do then you've you've you know you've you've taken a little from the character and, and that doesn't seem right either right so you you have this perfect mind and yet you gotta you gotta make him fallible in some way which i think they did a good job of how do we throw something in there that and you guys pointed this out last week how do you throw something in there that you cannot plan for because you don't know this exists, you know, type of thing, which I thought was a good way to, to, to go out. Um, I wish it didn't exist, but that's just my personal, <laughs> personal things, ways. but you know, exactly. But, uh, well, I'm, I'll say this, does, 
speaking of characters, because at the end of the day, Star Wars are, is about characters, and that's what really matters at the end of the day. My, I guess my gripe, it's not even a gripe, it's just like something that obviously we should talk about when we're talking characters, is this is take away from Vader's hunting down and killing Jedi type of stuff, or, or his importance, so to speak. Now, granted, I will give you that the Emperor around this time, even Vader, you know, from the comics and stuff, they both don't really like each other, really, and they're plotting against each other, which is the Sith way, you know what I mean? So I can kind of see where, you know, he's looking for another replacement. And Ezra is obviously overpowered as it is. So, you know, naturally the Emperor is going to be interested. So maybe it, it has to do with that. I don't know. Uh, final thoughts, uh, Albert. Um, final thoughts on the Emperor. It was great to see him. Um, the only thing we didn't touch on was the Royal Guards and the Force Pikes. I think we, I think we t talked a little bit about them in, in that Rebels episode, but, um, just quickly, I thought that was really cool to see them in the Force Pikes were like, that was something I'd never seen before. And maybe I'm, I'm, maybe I don't remember everything, but, uh, being able to use that and the, the way they kind of pinned down or held Ezra. Yeah. Um, it was very interesting. I don't know. I, I don't know how you guys felt about that, but it just. It's like, okay, wait, what? It's, it seemed like, like a Legends kind of thing more than anything. Yeah, it was nice know? to see it I on like screen. It yeah, because, yeah, I mean, I love the Royal Guards back in the day when I was, you know, Return of the Jedi. As much as I pick on the Ewoks and everything, the Return of the Jedi was pretty damn good. And it was my first introduction to Star Wars, really, in the theater. That was my first one because I was a little younger than, you know, everyone else here. Um, well, maybe not everyone here. But uh, in, in any case... That was my first introduction to it, and I love the Royal Guards, the Biker Scouts, too. That was, like, awesome stuff, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. And it was nice to see some kind of action, and it made me think of, obviously, The Last Jedi with the Praetorian Gods and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool just to see that. So in any case, but we're going to move on because time is running low here uh, on two things that I, I kind of wanted to bring up, and, and it kind of ties in with Ezra and even The Last Jedi when you think about it because it's kind of interesting. Um the thing I want to mention is, is obviously Ezra takes off into space with Thrawn and and stuff like this. And I know I confused Jonesy when I when I put this out here in the notes and stuff, and because I said, "Is Ezra a lost Jedi?" And by lost Jedi, I mean is because he went off into who knows where, okay, and was supposed to be led to believe that Luke is the last Jedi when Yoda dies in Return of the Jedi. And David said as much that you know Yoda's not lying here now. From your point of view, you could say, well, Yoda didn't know about Ezra still being alive and stuff like that. And my other question would be, was he really a Jedi? Was he trained fully to be a Jedi, so to speak? I guess you could argue Kanan was at that last moment. Like, he finally became the Jedi that he he wanted to be back in the day and, and you know, stuff like that. But did Ezra become that Jedi? And is, if he is, he's off in space and wandering around. What, what's going on here? Is he is he a Jedi still or is... Or is he maybe more of the Ahsoka where he's not a Jedi? He's kind of just a force user, sees it a different a different path and stuff? Because that's a possibility when he's at the end there. He's changing himself. You know, when you think about, you know, he's seen Bindu, all these things that have happened and, and stuff like that, his point of view changes. And obviously, when he goes off into the wild space there, who knows what happens and changes your mind and stuff like that. But uh, Albert, I don't know. What, what do you think of this? Uh, I'm going to chalk this up to Star Wars from a certain point of view kind of stuff. Because <laughs> yeah, really, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause, so Ezra as a Jedi, uh, I don't know. I mean, he's definitely, I mean, he, there's nothing he doesn't, there's, he does everything that a Jedi would for the most part. In fact, in that last episode, I don't know if you guys, there's one shot in there where he's jumping from one, like a platform and he clears, you know, almost 60 feet with the saber and it's flipping in the air. And I thought, wow, that's the first time we've really seen him kind of go all out. Um, so his, you know, characteristics and his abilities, abilities wise, and they were, they were kind of shining that in that last, uh, those last moments. But, um, if you want to get technical about it, I guess he technically was not a Jedi. And I would agree that when Yoda mentioned, makes this comment about, you know, when I die, the last of the Jedi, what you will be, I really think it's just because he doesn't know. Ezra, you know, wherever Ezra's at, he's completely off the radar. Um, so, you know, unknown regions or wherever that may be. But I don't think I don't think Yoda was lying. I just don't think he realized that this dude was probably um, still alive. Even, um, even with that connection that he had with him in season was it season two when he got his lightsaber crystal there. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I mean, that's the only it's the only logical explanation. Right. Because if you if you if you 
subscribe to the fact that that is inseparable, then the only other, then the only logical thing there at that point is that Ezra's gone dead. Yeah. And we know it he's not. So wow. something had to get severed there in some way. He, either he's just completely off the radar or completely out of, I don't know, maybe he's got bad coverage, so <laughs> cell coverage or something. But uh, yeah, I don't think Yoda, I don't think Yoda really thinks that he's just even around at this point. He probably just doesn't feel his presence anymore because he's just, you know, in a place where he can't or he's just too far away at that point. Or as it goes with that line, strong in the force I am, but not that strong. Kind of, kind of could be a double meaning there at the end there. I don't know. Yeah, batteries are running low. He's, yeah, exactly. He's pretty old. So, so what, what else do you think, sir? Um, as far as Keenan goes, um, I, I want to say, and I have, I'd have to go back and look, but I thought Ahsoka at least in her mind and in his mind, called him a Jedi Knight. And that was, I think, the way I walked away from that episode was, okay, well, that's good enough for as for, for Kanan. Um, so I think he was a Jedi, um, definitely a Jedi Knight. And even though he wasn't officially granted the title, um, I think Ezra, or I'm sorry, Ahsoka kind of did that for him. So, um, yeah, you know, both of those characters, It this has always been the problem for me because, when they introduced rebels and we saw there was going to be one, not one, but two people running around with lightsabers. That's, a, that's honestly the very first thing that came to mind. It's like, okay, we got more Jedi. And this is, is another issue that we've got going on with the comic book right now where Jocasta New is, you know, alive and Vader has a list of, uh, you know, like, I can't remember anymore, like nine, 10 other Jedi that are still out there. And that's going on in the comic book right now. He's out there hunting all these guys down. So you got to wonder, does Yoda know or did, did he not know about these other folks as well? I would imagine he he did, especially with uh, Jocasta uh, new there. Uh, I would imagine uh, he would know. I, I I'm not sure, especially with the, when you think of the like the Force, uh, not the Force Awakens, but the Last Jedi with the Sacred Jedi text. Like you would think somehow that all ties in, and I'm sure it does at some point. Um, but Josie, what what do you think of uh, Ezra being the lost Jedi or just kind of doing his own thing or, or anything. What, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. I'm willing to give Dave Filoni the, the uh, you know, the reasonable doubt here. He paraphrased <laughs> in the Jedi knife freezing or in the Jedi knife screening in the Q and a after that, he viewed it very much from that point of view of in the ways that he and Obi-Wan taught Luke, those ways are no longer, you know, there's no yeah. Jedi that fit that criteria anymore. And, and so I'm willing to go on board with that. And wherever Ezra's at, I think Yoda can probably still sense something there, but who knows? I mean, this is the, the area we've got to, I'm sure they're going to explore at some point as to just exactly how much can be sensed and where is Ezra and I guess Thrawn by extension to see what, how they still fit into the story as a whole. Um, but I'm willing to give them the, the shadow of the doubt here, but I, this is, again, it's another one of these, you have to really, kind of par for the for, uh, for the course these days with the interpretations of of what we've known for you know 30 and 40 years and now as we start to string some of these stories and pull them out and ex expand them a little bit we start to get into these manipulations of of what we thought were were truths and maybe they're not so much anymore are they are they pushing that point of view thing a little too much <laughs> yeah i, at I the think end of the so day? i mean uh, some of we're just wearing thin on, on some of this stuff where we want something fresh to where it's not that we are constantly challenged on what we know already. Um, because I, I, I think we're seeing a mixed reaction to some of that. And we just have a little bit of this, at least I'll speak personally, a little bit of this fatigue, which is revisiting those same story arcs and then, and then changing our perspective on that. I'm, I'm a little tired of that. I'm, I'm really just wanting something fresh to where, yeah, you can kind of leave my childhood alone a little bit and let me be happy and you know, what I think I know. And then let's explore some new territory. So, yeah, I'm, yeah, get a little burned out on that. Well, yeah, we've always, yeah, I've yeah. gone, I'm, Go I'd say, no, I was going to say, I'm, I've gone 35, 40 years now of, of wondering and not having a lot of facts. I'm kind of tired of it. Just start giving me the facts, guys. Really? Just, you know. Lay it all well, out well okay. I'm not surprised because you hate cornflakes. So I'm I'm not surprised you would say such a travesty of, <laughs> of, of, of things. But I, I think they've gone too far with the whole uh, from a certain point of view. And then they inject like something with the, the Return of the Jedi with Leia and Maz and Chewie and R2 coming up with a plan, so to speak. So it's like it, they want both worlds in a way and it kind of gets mucky at times. But I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, those are little short things. It's not the end of the world or anything, but it's just curious. And in any case, we'll move on to our last segment here, which is another thing that kind of 
bugged me about The Last Jedi, and maybe no one else this bugged anyone else, but uh, is the fact that, you know, not that, and, and I'll, give, I'll give Ryan and, and people credit here um, with Disney and, and Lucasfilm is, because Luke's character, and as I've said it on the show with the dissection and all that stuff, is where Luke always did his own thing. He didn't listen to his masters, and that's what was needed, and that's why his character was great and, and all that other stuff. And, you know, Yoda begs, well, doesn't beg to him, but kind of says, pass on what you've learned. And obviously, from what we know with the novel, the journey of uh, the legend of Luke Skywalker, and that he didn't pass on what he learned till later on. And now I'll grant you that, you know, he had to go out and about and, and learn things and become wise. As And I think he even mentioned in the movie, uh, or it was in the novel, I'm getting confused there, where he says, I thought I was wise. I, I don't know if he mentions it to Yoda or, or to Ray. I can't remember who or what, but uh, paraphrasing, to, to be honest, uh, he says something similar to that, I think. And where he's just kind of, you know, I thought I was wise at that time, and then he waited till later in life, which isn't a bad thing. But you would think, and of course he did try with Leia, but Leia was like, no, nah, I gotta go do this. And you got to go do that and stuff. And Luke was finding answers, which isn't bad. But did he spend too much time collecting compasses and, and Jedi texts and stuff and not enough time contemplating? Maybe that was the bigger thing that was missing. I don't know, Albert. What do you think? Yeah, I, maybe. Um, he, he, I, think that's a, I think it's a valid point. I think he probably did spend almost too much time going out there. But then the other side of it is, well, he didn't really have you know, he didn't have the Jedi, the old Jedi there. He didn't have somebody you know, to teach him all this stuff. Luke was always, even though he had Yoda and, you know, Kenobi in his ear every once in a while or in his face like at times, to me, it always, his, 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 his biggest struggle was he did not have a master and all of this was kind of self-taught um, and self-learned. And so, you know, you, you kind of have to give him a little bit of slack just because he doesn't, he, he was having to go out and find all this stuff on his own um, learn a lot of these things on his own. And, and because of that, yeah, maybe there was, uh, too much time that lapsed and he really didn't get a chance to pass on what he was supposed to pass on. And when he did, it blew up in his face. Um, no pun intended. Um, and you know, now he's dealing with all the repercussions. So I think maybe that, that kind of plays into some of the regret and some of his, uh, downfall and why he's, you know, exiled himself and that kind of thing. I mean, there's probably some self pity and self loathing there. Uh, for, for having gone, you know, waited too long and, and not really have, had been as successful as, you know, people were looking for him to do like Yoda, right? I mean, Yoda was counting on him to start the whole thing up again and, and be successful and it didn't happen the way it was supposed to. So, so yeah, I think there's an argument to be made that maybe he did spend too much time, but, um, I guess on the other hand too, like I said, he's, he's a, a one man show and he really kind of had to figure a lot of this stuff out, feel it out for himself. True. I mean, well, I, I, I guess part of the. The other issue is is we don't know if he was communicating with Obi Wan at the time, or even you know if what he learned from Ahsoka, maybe even Ezra or Yoda, you know all these all these different things. We don't we don't have those gaps filled in yet. So Dave, please give us all those answers. Uh, those are answers we do want, um, which would make things a lot easier for us. But uh, Jonesy, what are your thoughts on on this? Am I maybe nitpicking too much here, or or shouldn't I shouldn't let this bother me so much? I mean. I guess maybe it's it's in the old ways of like, oh, yeah, Luke went on, he created the new Jedi, this whole thing, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, because obviously the Jedi were important to Luke. Like, he held on to that belief, you know, when he throws his lightsaber and says, I'm a Jedi like my father, you know, obviously all that stuff. So I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, it's a little bit of a bra uh, bravado there at the end of Jedi. But yeah, I'm, I'm with Albert. Is he... You've been taught. You've you've had to learn this stuff kind of in a crash landing scenario, in the in a matter of just a really a few years, I guess. And so you want to take time to to figure out everything that you think you should know. But then when the time comes to have that pressure on your shoulders to rebuild and to teach, you want it to be perfect, right? And I think this is what last you know, what the last Jedi I was trying to get through with Yoda. He didn't pass on any of his failures. He just wanted it to to be the ideal world of the Jedi of, of this perfect thing, which which of course was pretty much the exact same types of uh, things we saw in the Clone Wars, which ended up being its downfall then too. So I, yeah, I, but it, yeah. So did he take too much time? It's unclear how much time he took um, 
to get there, although it seems like it was maybe in this decade-ish type of thing, which I think is probably too long. Sometimes you just got to take the training wheels off. But it was really that frame of mind that it seems like he had where he he did not want to accept full accountability for everything and teach everything. He just wanted to do just with the, uh, there's just the shiny, pretty parts of it all. Well, Albert, I'll, I'll say this, I'll ask you, and we'll wrap up the show in a minute here, is... Did Luke finally cave? And again, we don't know the answers. Did he talk to Yoda or Obi Wan and all them and stuff? Um, you know, did he finally cave in and figure, all right, I'll, I'll give in and I'll pass on what I learned? I mean, eventually, I think he thought he had to do it. But you know, maybe Ben was the catalyst because Ben was kind of crazy in the head, and Luke figured he could kind of save him. I mean, he saved his father, so maybe you know, everyone put two and two together and thought that would happen. But it turned out to be equal up to five, and and things went awry. I don't know. What what do you think? Yeah. I mean, well, he had all his, he had all the other, the 12, the dozen or so, um, students as well. Yeah. Um, and you know, basically if you take it in the literal sense, we know that, uh, there were only a handful that left with Kylo, meaning the other ones were probably killed. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, I, you know, we don't really know what the, I guess the bigger, the end game was for Luke and what he was really trying to do outside of we outside of the obvious, which was to rebuild the Jedi temple and rebuild the Jedi and bring them back. Cause I mean, even Ray, when she sees him, she's like, Hey, we got to start this up again. We got to get the band back together. Yeah. We got to get Jedi out there. Right. So, you know, that was probably what at least everyone uh, came to understand that Luke's intentions were. Um, and I think, you know, part of why it probably failed was the fact that he just didn't, he, he didn't have enough information or, um, you know, he was, like he said, in my hubris, he thought, you know, I can do this. This is, you know, they're infallible. And, and, and that's kind of what led to all that, to that downfall, um, especially with Ben. So, um, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a big chunk of the story that I think a lot of us really want to know. And I think we've talked about this about, you know, maybe they go back and do a cartoon or maybe they go back and do, you know, a book or something, but we really would like to get that section that to really understand what that was like uh, between Ben and Luke and what Luke, what was going on in Luke's mind really throughout all this. It's just a huge part that's missing. And really the best we can do at this point is just kind of speculate on, on a lot and of then it. Who was, who was well, the uh, first student yeah. too, right? So I think a lot of people have, we've, we've kind of assumed it was Ben, but you don't just come up with an, uh, with a dozen other students out of nowhere. So I'm kind of curious. True. When, yeah. So it's unclear to me when he started and who he started with. With Jason, Jason Sindula. Yeah, with Jason. <laughs> and uh, Jason turned out to be a Knights of Ren. Uh, and then actually, I like the, I love the, the idea of Ahsoka being a Jedi again with Luke, like coming full circle. Uh, that wouldn't be bad, but I also like the idea that like she puts in his head that the Jedi were at fault and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, the other interesting thing is I would love to see is him talking to Obi-Wan because... It to me, and maybe I'm wrong in my point of view here, is that he threw Obi Wan under the bus when it came to Anakin turning to the dark side. Like when he mentions, you know, and he they trained him to be, you know, and then he turned to the dark side and stuff. I don't know. Am I crazy thinking that? Albert, you think yeah. The uh, where you're saying where he he threw Obi Wan under the bus. Oh yeah, yeah. Where, where yeah. you're talking about in the last Jedi? Yeah, in the last. He was talking to Ray. He kind of he doesn't mention that. I mean, it's implied in my eyes at least that he kind of blames Obi-Wan for Anakin's fall in a, in a sense. I don't know. I could be wrong. What do you think? Yeah. Um, I think we talked about this on, on the show at one point. Um, I think my answer was that I didn't really see it as him just kind of, I didn't see him like throwing him under the bus. I think it was just, I think he just left that out to be honest, because otherwise he'd have to get in there and start explaining about <laughs> what all that was. And so it was just easier from, from, at least in, in his relationship with Ray and what he knew about her at that moment and really wasn't a whole lot. I don't think he was really going to get into the weeds about how a lot of that transpired. So I don't think he was doing, I think he was omitting it for other reasons that probably weren't, um, you know, they weren't, uh, it, it wasn't a slight, I guess, towards him. And, and that, that's, yeah, I mean, he left out all the parts where they were basically brothers and things like that too. Right. So he was clearly trying to drive a point home and, and he had one perspective on doing that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. All right. Well, that's going to do it for episode 224. Uh, if you guys want to find out where to like us, find us, you know, follow us on Twitter and, you know, get a T-shirt or whatever. Find us on Patreon and stuff. And and the good thing about the Patreon 
uh, listeners, they don't get to listen to the commercials. So if you don't like commercials at all, I suggest you do that. Not that we have a lot of ads in our episodes anyway, but uh, that'll do it for us. Uh, Albert, final thoughts uh, before we go? Um, looking forward to the next show. I think we're going to try to hit the novel, so we'll be coming back to, to do that. So there's some some good stuff in there and that we'll be decomposing. So, um, yeah, that's exciting. Oh, we'll I, I can't wait. Uh, and, of course, Jonesy will be joining us once again. So, Jonesy, thank you for coming back on or coming on. Well, because you were on CAD. So, you know, for me, it's like your second trip here. Um, but uh, any final thoughts before we go? No, oh, it's going to be weird not having a TV show for Star Wars for a while. So curious when we're going to get some concrete news as to when one's going to spin up. Horses are definitely. Oh, besides that. Uh, no, no. Like like <laughs> the, the cartoon that we really want. But anyway. Oh, okay. Sorry. Not with that, deserve. we're going to. Exactly. All right. We're out of here. Take care, everybody. You're still listening? Wow. That's amazing. Well, I'm here to give you the disclaimer. Normally, we do a big, long, drawn-out disclaimer thing saying what's what and who's what and all that other stuff, but I think you guys kind of know that Lucasfilm and Disney have uh, no affiliation with us at all, uh, and we have none with them. Uh, We talk about Star Wars, which is their property and all that other good, fun stuff, uh, but I think you can tell which is our stuff and which is their stuff. If you can't, well, then send a lawyer to send an email to me, and I'll be glad to chat with them. Other than that, you know what's what, so that's your disclaimer. 